Hello and welcome to this connect. This episode has a topic that Karthik has thought of so I'm going to let him start the proceedings. It's simple. Speed, man. Where is this question coming from? It actually comes from a friend and he was concerned about speed limits and the other new expressways have higher speed limits. Hmm. and he was saying that why are they increasing speed limits hmm. it's a it's a recipe for disaster going faster is more dangerous we know this already from what happened on the mumbai pune expressway where the speed limits used to be higher and then accidents happened and um, they brought the speed limits down now it's at 100 kilometers an hour thankfully it used to be at 80 at one point yeah so there's lots to talk about uh, as to speed and speed generally when we are talking about it right now uh, i don't think we mean about it as speeding we talk about speed as in what is a good speed to be at right is yeah it, sure why not no <laughs> <laughs> speed is just distance over time it's not a complicated thing scientific engineers are hey, basic it is you do more distance over a small amount of time you get big speed i mean what's the big deal that's sorry that's all there is on this subject oh but there is so much about it right why do you think there are speed limits at all that's a great question um i would assume that it is to regulate the flow of traffic and somewhere why does it need regulation at all so that the flow is smooth so that it's safe the distances between vehicles are consistent whereas if there's a high variation of ah uh, yes yes high variation <laughs> <laughs> Yes that brings me to the other side that there should be a minimum speed limit as well yeah right? there should there should be a minimum speed limit yeah and some countries some roads are, do have minimum speed limits and that is a fantastic i think we need to have that as well aside from a speed cap there should be a minimum speed level without which you can, i mean if you are go- traveling slower than that you can be fined that would be fantastic if india were to implement a minimum speed limit cap let's say only on the major highways where right. traffic is generally higher right what do you think is going to happen on those roads leave us a comment <laughs> the thing is where there are fast speed limits hmm. and minimum speed limits hmm. it presumes an amount of driving etiquette that i don't think we are capable of unlocking anytime soon hmm. right where have we experienced the fastest speeds that we've ever gone at i'm assuming it's a autobahn in germany in something fast yeah right have you done 300 ish yeah so have i mm-hmm. right and what it hinges on is not the fact that my car does 100 right it hinges on the idea that the guy in the car ahead of me recognizes the fact that i am legally allowed to do 100 uh, 300 i am coming at you right. at 300 right and let's say a kilometer further up the road he needs to recognize me coming uh-huh. and move out of my way Correct. And I bear the same responsibility to somebody else behind me who's going even faster. Have you been past going 280, 290 ninety kilometers an hour? Has something ever come past you on a German highway? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, completely it's normal. <laughs> yeah. And you do start paying attention. You're not only paying attention to that car a kilometer away is technically whatever four or five or six seconds away from me, but you're also watching your rearview mirror constantly to see yes, there will be another guy in a car that is this level of fast or even faster, faster. going. 10 12 14 30 kmph faster than you too he is also legally doing this and he is assuming that you will get out of the way speed limits are a way to make order hey sorry autobahn also doesn't allow motorcycles right yeah, of course they do are they allow motorcycles of course oh yeah 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 now we passed by a motorcycle i would have loved to see that let's go wow i'll pass you <laughs> easiest <laughs> thing ever fantastic no but they don't have a rule about uh, they they all the bigger highways internationally usually have a uh, displacement cap saying if your motorcycle is below such and such displacement usually 250 i think then you can't go on the highway okay. the assumption being you're keeping up with that traffic will be too much strain so the minimum level of performance required so to that, be if you have so many bhp so many cc please come to the highway uh-huh. you pay a toll just like anybody else you have a sticker the, mm. um, it's a sticker that pays a certain part of the tax for the creation mm. of the highway mm. it's available at petrol pumps and stuff you get a sticker just like a car guy would mm. and then that completes your legality set and then you can ride a bike so you've ridden i mean obviously in india you've ridden a lot on high performance vehicles and never on a expressway in india though <laughs> <laughs> so okay and you have also ridden extensively in europe yeah right um what is the difference in speeds that you'd be doing 
most places in Europe, you would stick to the speed limit. Hmm. So technically, you are sometimes much faster in India than you are there. All right. But your sense of chaos is always much lower there because their drivers know that the motorcyclist is a hard to see, hmm. uh, more likely to change direction without warning, hmm. uh, can accelerate and brake very suddenly. Right. Uh, braking cars will break, out brake you, but a motorcyclist hmm. hitting the brakes really hard is just something that you'd expect them to do because they're a light bit device in that sense, right? So it's a less chaotic environment and people make more hmm. space for you. Correct. Uh, there was one drive in uh, Paris, I think, Srini was driving. And Srini left hand drive, right hand drive causes him quite a bit of confusion. Huh. Which strangely enough never causes me confusion. So hmm. obviously for me this is like why are we driving like hmm. but this is the first So minutes, he was switching say. sides? So he was sitting with his uh, uh, tires on the lane division. Okay. Giving himself lots of space next to the verge. Huh. Which is where the motorcyclists pass you in Paris. Right. Like in Mumbai you will see the motorcyclists sometimes sit very close to the mid median. Right. Rather than the edge of the road. Okay. Whereas most of North India, you'd see the motorcyclists on the edge of the road and almost never at a median. Oh, so I never noticed that. Paris, traffic goes past you hmm. between the fast lane and the middle lane. That's okay. what they used to get through. And every Parisian driver knows that in France, that's where the motorcyclists are. Oh, interesting. Where Srini's tail light was. <laughs> uh, so when Srini figured out left hand drive, right hand drive, got his balance, moved into the center of the lane and finally released that space, we had a string of bikers who went past going, <laughs> they, they were fingers shown that we, I cannot show you on this podcast. <laughs> Uh, I mean, but that's what they did. Oh, fantastic. Uh, of course yeah. they did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it's the chaos that you're trying mm. to manage. Mm. I mean, if you think about everything that we do in our lives, mm. human civilization, everything is entropy management at the end of the day. Speed limits are also entropy management. Yeah. The gap... He's he's not going into the... Any, huh, See, no? The dark side. Yeah. Uh, anyways, entropy See, management. Uh-huh. Speed limits as a method of population control, there are pros and cons, okay? In a country with as populous as we are... Hmm. Um, no, I'm saying, <laughs> I, I'm saying that, uh, no, I've lost my thread only. <laughs> what were I saying? <laughs> you were talking about speed management, entropy. <laughs> yeah, so the, to me, the biggest gap actually, mm-hmm. and there is data to show this now. So I'm very happy to have been corroborated by data. But mm-hmm. my feeling is that mm-hmm. you have a natural sense of speed. Yeah. And roads that match your sense of speed generally let you ride more peacefully. It's not slower. Mm. It's more peacefully Mm -hmm. and with fewer incidents because you're paying attention naturally. Right. Right. So I think that when we ride, there are speeds that we classify as slow. It's not a numeric classification, Mm. but it's a classification where I'm a little bored. Mm. I wish I could go a little bit faster. And you're being prevented from it by traffic or by road conditions or by a speed limit. Then there is a speed in the middle where you're happy. Right. Where your brain is firing on all cylinders, you're plugged into that environment, you're not burning a lot of energy. It's cruise control for your brain effectively. Right. Above that is a speed that is thrilling, Mm -hmm. but it is thrilling because your brain is sending you signals saying, bro, how fast are we going now? And there is a thrill associated with that risk. To me, that is overspeeding. But that overspeeding can occur at 25 kilometers an hour inside a city street. And it may not be over speeding at 900 kilometers an hour if the road was wide enough and straight enough. So my point, when we, when we start talking about autobahns, so the whole thrill of the autobahn is getting to the unrestricted sections, right? And the unrestricted sections are unrestricted, whereas the others are still fairly fast. And we had this really long stretch where we were, you know, you could just sit at whatever you wanted to do for however long. Because the road conditions were so good, the traffic was so well behaved. I kid you not, after some time, 240 felt normal, felt normal. It started to feel boring. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, okay. I don't have to do anything because the road is straight mostly. I mean, even if it is curved, it's very gradual. And it's calculated to allow you to do that speed. Exactly. So after some time, the fascination of that speed also by itself is gone. Yeah. Because you're not feeling the sensation of speed that has been reduced. Yeah. And, uh, so the conversation which started with the Mahasamrudhi Mag, apparently, and uh, one of our colleagues, Vivek, he's just been to Buldana and mm. he was talking about the highway and all. Apparently, it's so straight. It's so straight that people get unnerved by it. Like after some time, it's like, what's going on? You it, would, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's the other thing. You know, the speed limits going up in one way is good because A, it's going to be about how much visual space you have Mm. right the further you can see the wider you can see the greater sense of comfort you'll have so having a higher speed limit per se is not a problem 
is yeah yeah correct per se is not a problem because the, there's the human analysis and computational aspect of it but mm. there's the other side which we'll get to but you uh, love the other side don't uh, you <laughs> my friend <laughs> so uh that is that part of it which is saying that yeah you can handle that speed because your brain is being able to process mm. all of it far more easily yeah and when it gets easy it gets normal as well so that Again. excitement that people think about speed is relative to everything else of course if i were to make you do the same speed and i had a movable wall on the side which would get closer and farther away from you i could totally mess with your sensor speed if i hit the speedometer right at the race track when we do our first few sessions mm. we tape up their speedometers correct because we want that sensor speed to come from your sensory input and not your numerical input from your speedometer but that's just a distraction mm. right when you're not a skilled rider 43 kmph into a corner can be a, a feeling of i feel like i'm going very fast but i can see that it's not very fast right and you have an unnecessary distraction there when you learn to go fast you'll go 65 kmph into that corner and you'll think i think i can go faster processor upgrade yeah it's it's a how you fit into the environment and the number represents a data point but when you scale that to i don't know a city of 1.8 million people who are trying to get to work mm. then suddenly the fact that they all have their own subjective way of assessing speed it's a recipe for even more chaos rather than a solution why is that road so straight it's the fastest way to get from point a to point Correct. b you put curves in it it might be more interesting to drive but it will be slower to drive because you do have to slow down for the bends the car slows down by itself as you turn the car etc cetera, etc cetera. and then the skill challenge becomes bigger and bigger the tighter the curves you throw at it i have heard of instances where road builders uh, i don't think that was from india have purposely created roads that are not straight because eventually driver attentiveness goes down yes. and it creates a sense of fatigue when the road is too straight you're right so uh, that's I, i'm really looking forward to hitting that road at some point in time but uh, until then we'll have to go with anecdotal evidence the other side of this discussion and your friend's actual question is actually a relevant one which is if i give you a road that say the speed limit is 150 and remember that when a government today designs a road they design it for something and then they take i don't know 20% off that and say that will be the posted speed limit but then they ask the question saying can we post that today are drivers ready for it and right. then they'll say no maybe we'll take 20% off let that road be for 5 years and then we'll raise the speed limit is how it actually works right so if the road is sign posted 120 its design speed is probably something like 150 or 160 right i was at a company in delhi in turning when they were drawing the expressway between mumbai and pune for the first time oh wow not on that project but i was doing something else oh, and nice. uh, i probably may have caused a few land owners to have less or more land because i didn't draw my maps correctly at that point of time maybe but that road was straight oh really it was straight from here to there oh man more or less and as i understand it if the politicians hadn't gotten on the action and said must pass through my constituency so that the construction money etc etc can flow into my constituents and all of that drama that road would have been a heck of a lot straighter So the time it would take to cover those 99 kilometers would be a lot less. But then the express would also be a much more boring road to drive because yeah. you'd come out of Mumbai and go like this big eyes cruise and get control. to Pune sort of like you know I don't like cruise control but that I mean nowadays with those kind of roads you just like now you start appreciating cruise control exactly. Yeah, like, and now think about it from the autonomous driving perspective which we are say 15 years from hmm. the straighter the road gets the easier the autonomous system will have a time absolutely it makes the efficiency even faster okay. and i know whether we think of roads as a place that we can go and have a good time hmm. and i'm not mean in the sense of being lawless about it but it takes us to nice places it hmm. creates good memories for us the things that we enjoy about machines cornering them etc etc they're all part of how the road hmm. network works hmm. it's not how the autonomous machine will see it Yeah, that, that, that machine will interpret every curve a designer put in as which is making me go slow around this thing, right? Not because I can't, because my passengers will start throwing up if I go at the speed I go to. The, so that's that's the when the processing skill of uh, processing and the skill of the computers get to that level. But I want to go back to skills and drivers and riders. I have a theoretical situation. One road. What would be the right speed? to travel along it let's say it's a two lane road what would be the right speed to travel on it and would it always be the same it shouldn't always be the same look mm. 
let's say that I am elected prime minister of the country. Let's say. So now I have a cavalcade. And now they'll block everybody off that road for me because whenever I... Hmm. I could go 900 kilometers an hour, be completely safe. Right. Right? Now, I get demoted. Okay, I'm the CEO of a company. So I'm allowed to have a cavalcade, but we're not allowed to stop traffic. Depending on how effectively I can stop traffic, I might be able to do 150. Hmm. We did through Mexico on the SLS AMG drive, if you remember. Yeah. Right? That those policemen who normally guide the Carrera Pan Americana, which is a race, and they block off the road so the cars go through at as fast as they want to. They blocked off every intersection so effectively and we were told to get out of the city as fast as possible so we cause a minimum of disruption. Right. So we were came out of the hotel, we hit something like 120, you were driving I think and I was sitting be beside you. And we left that town doing 120 until the highway. I it was <laughs> it was on the highway that he slowed down and then got, then a cop pulled up parallel to us and said, why are you going so slowly? What is wrong with you? You got a SLS AMG and we got screamed at and Karthik's like, I'm just getting used to the car. I mean, please let me be. And we were actually trying to follow the speed limits and he's like, what are you talking about? Go, go, go. Yeah. So it depends on the situation, right? Yeah. Why do we say that if you go down the highway, you go fast, you can easily forget to slow down for towns. Right. But you must slow down for towns. There's traffic there. Just because you've sat on a reasonably, like when you go to Bangalore from here. Like when you go to Bangalore from here, it's an empty highway for miles together. Seriously. Especially once you leave Karnataka. And great surface also. But uh, enter, Karnataka. Enter, enter Karnataka. But does that mean the road is empty in Karnataka? Mm. By and large, yes. Mm. But when you hit the village sections, there is the usual chaos of you being passing through a village. Even though they built walls, when you build a wall, a human being jumps the wall. Remember? That's who we are. So Challenge I accepted. will come down the highway at 100. Yeah. But I will slow down to 60 for the village. That village will last 300 meters and then I can go back to doing 100. That's courtesy. Then we negotiate with courtesy. Would you like to do this at 3 a.m. in the morning knowing that the human who's going to jump the wall is fast asleep? Maybe you say, okay, I don't need to do 60, maybe 80 is fine. Right. To me, there is now studies which you will find on YouTube if you go looking where they studied roads where there are an exceptional number of accidents. Okay. What they discovered and you should see the study because they're interesting, is people were doing speeds that were very different from the posted speed limit there. Very different, matlab? Some places they were thinking they need to go much slower. Uh -huh. But they were saying, but it says whatever number it does. So we should be able to go faster. Uh -huh. And then they had a crash. Okay. And there were other roads where people were thinking that they could go faster, but the speed limit was lower. And those caused the crash. The gap between the expectation of speed and the limit of speed was so large Huh. That when they changed the speed limits to something more natively suited to that oh. situation, the number of accidents started falling. And not in all cases did they reduce the speed limit. Okay. In some cases, they did have to raise the speed limit. So one of my friends, you know Lalit, right? He'd moved to New Zealand. Hmm. And uh, so obviously he wanted to ride and drive over there. And while he was there, he came back and he was just tripping. He was like, dude, the speed limits are crazy. I said, what do you mean? He said, first and foremost... They're very strict. I said, okay. I said, so what's trippy about that? He said, what the speed limit is, is actually the limit of that road. Yeah. You go into a corner, there's a corner coming up and if it says 40 and you try and do 45, you will crash. Mm. That corner can be done at the most at 40. And he's like a skilled rider, driver, right? Yeah. So he's not like a newbie. So he said, wherever in New Zealand you see a speed limit, you stick to it. You don't you don't try and, you know, outdo it or overperform and say that, yeah, it's possible. So what it's written over there, you can manage only that. I heard the same when we were riding the scout and our guide leader uh -huh. was telling us the same thing. Saying the more arrows you see pointing into a corner, the sharper that the turn sharper is. is. <laughs> You'll see that number falling. And when you see low numbers like 20s, 30s and 40s, that's what your bike is going to do through that right. corner. You're not going to manage much more than that. Yeah. It's also because the roads are a little slippery hmm. and the inner roads are a little bit narrow. So it's a very clever system. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much thought they put into it, but they put a lot of thought into it. So it's nice when uh, somebody has thought about it so much and sets, sets speed limits so that it actually works that way. You don't have to right. think about it. Um, I think what we were discussing earlier... But see, but sorry, uh, but even on the Autobahn, they have put thought into it. Yeah. It's not like the Autobahn is unlimited on all days. Mm. Right? If the traffic goes beyond a certain point, there Correct. will be a speed limit. If Correct. there has been rain and the road surface is infrequently wet and dry, there will be a speed limit. And the speed limits are low. When it is limited, 110, 130 is what you're playing with. Which is not very different from what we do. Fantastic. That's exactly what I was uh, going to get to. I mean, skill is one thing. And you may have skill 
to travel faster than everybody around you but if you are in a public environment the idea is to find a speed which suits the conditions so that depends on traffic yeah. that depends on weather that depends on your energy state yeah. it depends on the next point the condition of your vehicle yeah which is what most people i don't think pay attention to exactly right? because you've been driving around the city so when i came to mumbai I'd be riding the bike like I would do in Delhi, right? And my boss would tell me there are Sunday drivers and there are Saturday drivers. You have to be super cautious. What is a Sunday driver? What is a Saturday driver? <laughs> Mumbai uses trains, right? So a lot of drivers don't drive until the weekend. Oh wow! So I they never are rusty. thought of it that way. Yeah, so they are rusty. Huh. They will make mistakes. Huh. They will not make catastrophic mistakes, hmm. but they will make small mistakes along the way. And hmm. he was basically saying this is a great place to ride a bike. There are so hmm. many nice hilly roads in the area. Please go and have fun. on a monday to a friday whatever you meet is fine huh. on a saturday and sunday there'll be a higher proportion of people who are not regular drivers huh. so their ability to pay attention huh. their skill and the quality and state of their vehicles the point you're making they will all be worse than usual have you noticed the extra chaos on saturday and sunday because i have i was thinking about something else entirely yeah? uh the two riders that my brain has now started to pick off immediately as red flags is one the scooter guy oh yeah as soon as you see this you're like okay white birth white birth because that guy is not even <laughs> processing the road or what's happening around him he's on his phone <laughs> right that's the that's <laughs> one and the other one which is even freakier is this i have seen people with their phones like this mounted yeah and they're watching stuff while riding yeah i've seen it too it's frightening no not to them Yeah, they okay. they use a, a a cell phone network called Mat Geo, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were going to leave all the dark stuff to us the end of the episode, but no, not yet. Uh, Why should you leave uh, the dark the, stuff? Uh, How will you appreciate Mat the light without some darkness? Yeah, so these are the things that you. St- I mean, like some things that I've started picking up, which just says that you know this guy is not yeah. focused on the road, and so. Yeah so the other side of this is what you started out with is if you don't drive your car regularly you pay no attention to it and you're just like yeah it's a car hmm. and you're not like a enthusiastic driver you won't pay attention to your car right right if you weren't a enthusiastic cook the kitchen doesn't really concern you and is not in your thoughts constantly right, right. it's the same with cars hmm. so when that guy heads out to a road which has a 120 km an hour speed limit he's making that car do stuff that it hasn't done in a long time and it might have lost some of those abilities to tire pressure roll yeah. tires brake pads that haven't been taken care of i think one of the of. most common reasons of accidents on the mumbai pune expressway at one point was tires yeah. and that's I, not rocket science we we've seen the other side too okay there was once in the rains uh, bert from overdrive and i were driving down to our pune office together we were in an, a luxury suv of some sort at bmw mercedes benz i don't know and there was a obviously a policeman in one of those reflective vests standing on the side of the road with his thumb out and it was raining so mm. we said might as well give him a lift right. so he sat down uh. and at that time the speed limit enforcement was a little weak on the expressway anyway and but he was doing his usual 100 plus mm. at some point the cop looks over and he says hey listen if you guys want to go faster i will not stop you uh. and we looked at him saying but that's illegal uh. he says it's illegal because there are a lot of people here who are doing speeds that they're not capable of doing I can see that you're an awesome driver. But better, I can see that you know what this expressway is like in the rain because you've not hit a single patch of water. Uh, I have seen you make lane changes waters, times uh, and times and times again uh, before you've actually come to the patch where water normally collects. So you've uh, clearly done this a million times before. Right. So I think it is safe for you to go faster. Mm. There is no traffic today. There's no mm. reason why you should be going slower. Now, that's not legally a good advice. Right. But what he's saying is spot on. He's saying that driver knew his car. He Skill knew based, the terrain yeah. he was driving mm. in. He knew the weather that he was driving through. So there's no reason why he needed to go 80 because the speed limit said 80. Right. You would have the judgment to say it's safer to do 60 here. But it is safer to do 120 there too. You right. are in that driving seat to be able to make an informed decision. And the reason why your friend is worried about speed limits is because most drivers will not make an informed decision. Correct. Thankfully, it's not next door. You remember when the ceiling opened? Yeah. It was Joyride Central because it Correct. was right outside Bandra on one side and right outside Worli on the other side, right? Yeah. So, so what should we do? We don't have nothing to do. Bombay doesn't have much to do. Right outside of work. 
what should we do we'll go for a joy ride on the bandravali sea link and that's when you have kids it, taking the, the, out of there was no toll at that time there was no toll there yeah. were no speed cameras yeah. at that point of time so it was all sorts of idiocy going on and a lot of crashes have happened right. and they were all joy riders not skilled drivers who had those accidents hmm right now you have speed limits and you have all of this and the police patrol it and the toll booth the police that are there are a little bit more aggressive about it so the number of incidents have come down hmm. we created the chaos so the police had to react to it if we had behaved well from day 1 hmm. none of this would be needed in fact i shout out to the mumbai pune expressway i've been using it a lot right now as you know doing up and down uh, between bombay and pune and because of better enforcement of the speed limit which is 100 which i think is all right mm. um, and now it's consistently 100 earlier there was all this stupidity of it dropping down to 80 and 60 at points and then going back up to 100 and you'd barely notice it and you'd keep getting challenges do you remember the time when the boards from the oldest version of the speed limit and then the newer version of the speed limit and the newest version of the speed oh, limit shucks. were all next to each other oh, and no. you didn't know which one was valid oh no so there was i think two or three months before they took the older boards down uh and there used to be the other classic one of the mumbai pune expressway used to be be careful <laughs> rain rainy season mm. all year round yeah. that board used to be up all, all year round yeah so now because of this better enforcement and they've only got a bunch of functional cameras i think they've mm. got about 3 or 4 mm. but because of that it's just so much easier yeah to travel the chaos has been cut out the stress has been cut out and you're traveling faster yeah. on an average you're yeah. tra- you're covering distances better yeah just because of that speed limit and speed enforcement i mean earlier you would have people driving faster but the overall flow of traffic was not so good correct but uh, that's the whole point right when you have a minimum speed limit and a upper speed limit you're achieving flow i mean that's yeah. the whole point yeah that i have a very high average speed even if i don't have very high peak speeds right Yeah peak speed don't help. Yeah peak speed yeah absolutely. It's being able to do consistently cover. Yeah. So uh, Samruddhi Mahamarg or whatever will work if you can leave Mumbai. Yeah. And then sit at a constant reasonably high speed the entire time till you get to the other side. That will give you a great average speed. Coming out of Bombay doing 190 getting five chalans and parking on the side because you're exhausted from the effort then eating lunch over 9 hours. And uh, I think when talking about Mahasamruddhi Marg and because that's going to be a long long highway and with a 120 km speed limit the thing is many people will be using the vehicles in those situations for extended durations yeah right in which case there is a certain amount of additional stress going into the tires mm-hmm. the brakes let's say brakes uh of tra- because of traffic or whatever right uh all those things will matter so people have to be more careful about the vehicles that they're driving at least to start off with have to be such a powerful thing to say you can say it for so many things what will people actually do because without that mm. the argument will continue being that drive slower reduce the speed limits so there's two ways to think about that's this that's punishing ourselves yeah yeah so there's two ways to think about this we can do things proactively and we can do things reactively okay i'm not judging you in the sense of judging you but i'm judging us as a group but i think indians at today's situation we are not proactive for everything hmm. we are mostly reactive hmm. i remember when the jaipur mumbai delhi open uh, road open for the uh, jaipur delhi road open for the first time it was a four lane road for the first time it was more or less arrow straight and all of that right. and until recently the road was in terrible shape with like these massive mounds of tar that the trucks had dug out because right. they were all freaking overloaded right i it looked like carnage because every kilometer there'd be a truck on its side or a bus on its side both sides right people just didn't know how to process a road that fast so they were going even faster than it on gone before hmm did people die yes was there lots of loss of property and whatever yes but that brought back the idea that oh that road is dangerous when that fell into place and people started slowing down then enforcement came and calmed it down completely and with the last time i drove the haryana police is everywhere and they are very aggressive about enforcing speed, speed limits on that road yeah now you, could you ask haryana police why they didn't do it before all that loss of property and human life happened yes you could would people have listened if they'd done that no it needed 
unfortunately all of that drama to happen before the case was built saying no we need speed limits we need enforcement haryana police will need interceptor cars they will need speed guns they will need automatic scanning mechanisms i think that is the game changer because earlier when poli- patrolling used to happen for speed it used to be manpower dependent mm-hmm. which meant it would happen at certain times of the day mm-hmm. it would happen only in some locations because there are only so many interceptor vehicles all that now you have those four cameras sitting there with their flashes ready ready to click off anytime yeah. and they're awesome right they don't take a break <laughs> they they're not there to negotiate with you you can't negotiate with them <laughs> it comes straight to your phone it's like, awesome hello yeah it's it's, it's I, i wish they didn't move the toll to an automated system like that and stop the stupid queues that we have to face on all the highways mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. that's what the other thing about new zealand that lalit didn't mention right like you just see, the fly by toll yeah, yeah you'd be coming down and you'd see toll booth ahead yeah. and then i'm on a bike and i know that i have to pay the tolls right, right? i think i had borrowed yamaha or honda to yeah. back to back yeah. and i'm going straight and i'm like where is that toll booth yeah. and i stopped at some beach or something and i met somebody and i was asking saying i saw a toll sign but the toll booth never came yeah. and she like yo it's just a gantry with some cameras and it reads your number plate and it bills your account yeah. and they have a fine system so if you pay within 7 days Hmm. then you get no extra fines okay if you don't pay then the fines ramp up really fast okay so it says so if you've just moved to new zealand it's a little bit of a challenge because huh. you're like my god the toll is such a gouge huh. but once you fall into the habit of say saturday 8 o'clock i will sit and just clear all my tolls for the week right then it no longer bothers you so much okay it's a habit forming thing but That's nobody stops at a toll booth right because you don't need to your car is linked to your bank account and there'll be a bill waiting i think now we're moving to gps based uh, tolls That's some true. way because if the mm. toll is the slowest part of your 120 km an hour yeah. highway yeah and a new one at that Correct. something's fundamentally broken right. like where is the traffic jam on the expressway usually the mumbai pune one they said the toll booth it's the and reddest thing on earth and on the google maps <laughs> <laughs> don't forget the cart the so what do we have to do as a nation to be able to make even higher speed limits happen because to me being able to drive more efficiently we have better automobiles than we've ever had before hmm. we should be able to allow faster machines like motorcycles to access these roads too what needs to happen i forget the name that you had shared last time about assessing your own riding skill or driving motor jitsu ah uh, motor jitsu right i think first and foremost we have to start there mm-hmm. we have to recognize what our skill level is Hmm. even as a driver i know driving is much easier and takes a lot of the hassle out but being attentive being able to hold a speed consistently also requires certain amount of let's say effort attention hmm. you need to be careful right being able to do that cleanly being able to understand what the road is like because you're not always driving on roads that you're familiar with if you're familiar with roads great that makes it much easier but being able to assess your own ability to ride and drive mm-hmm. is the first step mm-hmm. because only then can you say hey i can get better mm-hmm. so that i can be safer i think that is the still the top thing that comes in my head because irrespective of the fact of what speed that we are traveling at and yes we may be traveling faster than other people out there the top top thought in our head when we lock on a speed is are we safe correct right if is it, if this feels right yeah are you feeling comfortable and we are not resistant to changing that speed whereas there's a lot of people who say i got to 120 with so much effort i mean it's like you push the car there right. so i should don't want to slow down for anything you know how you used to like you drive, drove drive an old sumo yeah with a slow much body roll yeah. and the engine takes a while right if you get to 80 you don't want to give up 80 very easily it yeah. felt like you did a lot of work to get there Correct. right which is why the sumos back in the day when they were in mumbai in numbers you'd see them weaving <laughs> through traffic they weren't weaving because they were idiot drivers they were bad drivers but they were weaving because i finally got to 60 kmph i ain't giving this up <laughs> oh god i get it i, I call it momentum <laughs> driving uh, i've also done it uh, but it, there are certain vehicles that are slower than you expect and when you finally get them to a speed you're not giving that up very easily <laughs> but isn't the government and the authorities and all of that structure also responsible for what you just said your self awareness of course i mean uh, getting a license is right. easiest thing just pay a guy it's getting tougher apparently i'm not arguing that that is there that is not an option i don't know but uh, it is getting tougher mm-hmm. in fact now on the expressway i don't know uh, whether you've noticed or not at the toll booth mm-hmm. there is a small little uh, booth mm-hmm. on the side like a eight person kind of booth 
if you're caught speeding, they take you into the booth and like how you have those classes. They they make you <laughs> sit through certain training programs for safer driving. So that includes watching some videos hmm. of what's happened on the expressway in the past. And Ooh, oh yeah. A crash reel. Yeah. Why didn't they why didn't the police put this on Instagram because they'd be viral by now. <laughs> uh, maybe it's there I don't know but uh, mm-hmm. this I, I was told by somebody who also uses the expressway regularly he said that booth is for that. Okay. It's specifically for that. So yeah, I mean uh, better licensing for sure I think is required and uh, I think tiered licensing hmm. I think would again be a very important factor. Hmm. Uh, What's a tiered license? So just saying learner is not enough. Hmm. I think when we are talking about high performance machines that are available today, hmm. being able to break that up as a journey hmm. so that drivers and riders are safer. Hmm. I think that is important as well. So learner, noob, rookie, oh beginner. My God. <laughs> <laughs> like nine categories before you get to even intermediate. <laughs> I think before that people will give up. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> You think we have we have we have a lack of roads? Only the really dedicated will get licenses. Yeah, oh I mean, God. do we do we have yeah. too few vehicles yeah. on our road yeah. that we need to make our licensing structure easier? <laughs> It will save you so much construction cost and infrastructure cost. Uh-huh. Just take the damn bus. But I, I'm sorry. Before this, I wanted to say one thing. We have to celebrate speed. It is. I mean, today we are talking about 120 kilometers an hour so casually. I remember the first time I did 120 kilometers an hour. It's etched in my head. Mm. So I have a friend, uh, Gautam Kare from Nagpur. So he had moved to Pune uh, during college, and back then he had the W124, mm. right, which was the pinnacle, mm. right, at that point in time. And on a rainy night. We were, and back then Pune used to be dead. Like after mm. 10 o'clock at night, there was There's nothing. Village, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, okay, in the sense yeah, of the fine. villages go to sleep like at villages, night, right? Fine. Yeah. So, <laughs> I said was like a village. I didn't say is a village. So, uh, that night, we did 120 kilometers an hour. Hmm. And I'm not kidding you. I was talking about for the next year hmm. that we hit 120 kilometers an hour. Hmm. And that was, at, I mean, a Mercedes E-Class, hmm. right? Right. Today we are doing 120 kilometers an hour in casually in everything. Everything, mm. and the fact is that it is accessible without thought, without risk mm. to your life and to other people's lives. Mm. So casually, I think that in itself is massive. I know it's 30 years, but it's still yeah. Amazing. But we normalized it. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, and yeah. we have to respect it. That mindset that 120 is not enough in some people's heads. Listen, it's plenty, yeah. right? From a from from the standpoint of getting people to move freely, mm. it's a huge achievement. Yeah, yeah it's, it's what Anand says at the racetrack, right? He says a monkey can take a vehicle in a straight line at whatever speed you give him. Uh-huh. The monkey has to become human very rapidly when either there's something coming in front of it yeah. or there's a corner coming. <laughs> <laughs> right so will you go down the samruddhi marg or whatever at 120 kilometers an hour and have fun first half an hour yes yeah. after that it gets kind of boring yeah. but when something is in your way yeah. <laughs> then things get very interesting very quickly because a vehicle going 60 and a vehicle going 120 do not stop at 2x the distance right it's quite a bit more work and there's a hell of a lot more energy involved now correct because uh, yeah vehicles are i mean there's more technology hmm. to keep you safer hmm. but we do have vehicles that are heavier as well bigger okay so let's talk about real world s- situations you're going on the express when somebody is obviously over speeding what do you do i let them pass yeah don't try you know you know, wait you're not going to go pass them and then teach them a lesson my safety i will prioritize hmm simple as that Hmm. I mean I, I it's not like we can go out and influence it's not my job to influence everybody out there on on the road hmm. we can try <laughs> as best as we can over here hmm. but uh, on the highway no man so you've hmm. not tried to teach driving or riding to anybody you've ever met on the road does that make you a little uh, i don't know callous wow man. <laughs> okay one reason not to do that and this is specifically in the case of motorcycles hmm. It's like if you try and chase down somebody, mm-hmm. the chances are that person will only go faster, and chances are that person will not be. We are fortunate to be skilled and have had the opportunity to skill up. 
won't have as much skill in which case if you are constantly on his tail and he is going to go faster eventually one or both of you will have an incident at least one person will yeah so no, it's chasing people down in traffic and trying to teach them anything at all is a complete and utter waste of time makes no sense yeah first of all they didn't come to learn <laughs> okay they they just a person trying to get to some place in the middle of which there is an aggravation of some sort whether he caused it you caused it they caused it is not it doesn't it's not important i was going to say jomain but i know you'd ask what that means so who caused what is not important yeah. he's just a guy trying to get somewhere and now you're in his way so he's getting agitated about it right now this agitation will take a mild form of him rolling down the window and giving you a word in english or hindi that you were expecting maybe he has a baseball bat in his car maybe we're in delhi now oh my god okay clearly we're at the end of right. this episode no we so no, no think about it right what you tried to do from your perspective was the right thing which is that guy is behaving badly i think some somebody needs to put him in his place right or less aggressively somebody needs to show him that there is a better way to do it hmm. whichever way whichever way you fall on but this can have extremely unintended consequence and to me it is just safer for you to say oh he's an idiot and then just let him be yeah because we should try to pull all idiots up by their socks and make them better human beings but it's not a responsibility that can be executed in the middle of traffic what's that line every, every guy who's uh, slower than you is an idiot and every guy who's faster than you is an asshole <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not even saying classify them i'm saying ignore them because all the road rage that you see is primarily coming from stuff like this uh where you think he's in my way because he's a slow driver he's unskilled or why is that guy is going so going so fast i am at the speed limit sitting in the fast lane but the fast lane is for people who want to go fast some of them will go faster than the speed limit your job as a polite person is to say i don't want to get involved in your shenanigans hmm. not to teach them the lesson get out of the way and say yeah have at it and on that even though you may be traveling at 100 km an hour on a road that does is rated for 100 once you're done overtaking move back into the next lane i mean keep that lane open it's simple i mean stay out of trouble these are the easy things to do But there was one safe. time when this got confusing okay so this is how it works okay you have the slow lane the middle lane and the overtaking lane yeah also known as the fast lane which in india we use as our lane mm-hmm. but it's not what it's designed to do we're driving i think in poland in a convoy and i am in the car with a driver from another publication who there's no point naming but uh so he's the convoy leader Ooh. we have all the navigation equipment in our car the map that we are using the book and the gps device that we are using is also in our car so everybody is dutifully following us it's 11 o'clock in the night it's a khali road like there's nobody around so we're going 100 kmph in top lane which is the posted speed limit so everybody's everything is going fine then this man indicates left mm. and he's a slightly fidgety person mm. he indicates left and then we pull into the center lane we slow down to 90 oh you know since i i'm not listening to what you're saying i'm just trying to guess who it was yeah so <laughs> the, the, then you indicate left again and you get into the third lane uh, and i think it was a six lane road or whatever and we slowed down further hmm. and this kept on going and then hmm. we'd move up and go faster hmm. and then go to the fast lane and go faster and what's going on right. so finally somebody indicated that we should stop and we should have a chat so we stopped and the guy says fast lane is for going fast <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. slow lane is for going slow and everybody's like no the speed limit is universal for all of these mm-hmm. things the fast mm-hmm. lane is the overtaking lane so if you're going 100 i can temporarily go over the speed limit a little bit and come right. around you it can be done safely no it's not like this imagine this near midnight polish countryside we're having trouble navigating because the gps has a thing missing this is what we are arguing about oh my god on on and talking about travels one example that i want to share with everybody um, back at autoka we done the drive from germany to india hmm. so driving through russia hmm. was incredible hmm. because for extent like russia is massive right so we Huge. were doing 800 km days and we were averaging 110 km an hour hmm. you would think that that would be a four six lane highway hmm. it was a it was two lanes for mm. the most part but it was well surfaced and you knew going around a bend that there would not be a guy waiting to make a u turn in the middle of nowhere and if he did he'd have a dash cam and you'd be a youtube star yeah. <laughs> 
now that you remind me, that's Russian cities. <laughs> Our bag is much better. So, yeah. I mean, just simple infra, yeah. but backed with vehicles that can cover those distances and plus scale. scale. And scale. I mean, just the discipline makes such a huge difference. So, to answer your friend's question, right. what's going to happen when we have 120 km an hour speed limit on a few roads? Well, first of all, no motorcycles. Motorcyclists will be injured because they're not allowed. Second of all, mm. before they raise or lower the speed limit, there will have to be a significant number of incidents, which they will obviously correlate to speed. And speed is known to be a causative agent for many things, but it's not speed itself. It is an inappropriate speed in that situation that causes the problem. Right. And not necessarily you are going too fast or too slow. Right? To me, until we become a slightly more, let's say, knowledgeable society, some of this nonsense has to happen first for it to be at the trigger point for the better thing to happen next. I don't think there's a way to avoid it. But does that mean that we are scared of it and we're going to stick our speed limits at 60 kmph or 80 kmph and live our lives out? I don't think we can afford to do that as who we are as a country right now either. Right. So difficult times, transitional times on many fronts, right? It's not the EV thing and the petrol thing or the hydrogen thing or the renewable. Mm. Everything that you do in India, we are leapfrogging everything. Absolutely. We jump generations. We jump yeah. generations. When yeah. you jump generations, a few people will land badly and break a foot or two. I mean, it, it's sad and it's tragic, but it is how it is. So guys, for you, simple speed limit. Forget about that. Find your comfort zone. That's what's important for you as a rider and a driver. And of course, get in tune with your machine so that you know that it is up for whatever you want to do, right? Yeah, and generally the guy who's put the speed limit in knows what they're doing, okay? It's not a random number that a politician pulled out of a hat. There are engineers involved who designed the road to do a certain speed and then right. they said safety margin. And then they built, for example, the banking so you could go around the turn at the speed limit. So even if you are a super, super skilled, super fast driver, and you can watch the Formula 1 drivers driving on the road. They drive really well, they drive really fast, but they don't necessarily drive over the speed limit. Mm. Your natural speed is not always over the speed limit. Okay? Being able to say, I know what the car is like at 100 kilometers an hour is not just the accelerator. It's the brake and the steering and the passengers too. How smoothly can you do it? How smoothly, efficiently, effortlessly can you do it where your occupants are unaware that we are going through time and space at that rapid a pace? Correct. How... Normal can the car feel when you're going at the speed limit is the key to the skill, right? And ultimately, no matter how you slice it, you're going to get to, say, Nagpur on the other side an hour faster or slower than the guy who went really fast or slow. So it honestly doesn't add up. I, I, I think there's a, I could think of a hack for this. If you want to find the right speed, think about it this way. What speed or driving style would you be willing to do for the next eight hours? Yeah. Yeah, it's if a mindset. Will, yeah, if you're willing to do that speed for the next eight hours, that driving style. Yeah, and that changes, right? As the conditions change, that the actual number on the speedometer yeah, will change, although the mindset remains exactly the same. Yeah. Which will slow you down to 20 in a town if needed and take you back up to the speed limit out on the highway. Would you recommend people break speed limits? Tough one. I, I, the easy answer would be no. I understand that there are situations where you can say that, yeah, it's okay to do so, mm. right? Like uh, we were talking about the Bangalore Highway, which in places is six lanes, there's nothing. It's beautifully yeah. uh, marked out. It's completely closed off. And you can easily do go faster over there, mm. right? I understand that, right? But would I do it consistently? I don't think so. Mm. You know, it's I, I, I still feel because you know that there are X factors, mm. You don't know whether it'll be a dog, cat, bakri, yeah. something. It can happen, right? Mm. That is normal for us. Yeah. So in which case, I, I don't think it's worth it. And it doesn't add up. It doesn't. It's not worth it. Yeah. So when I started riding the faster machines out on the highway regularly to go to the racetrack, there was a phase when I said, ah, yeah. can I sit at 130 and do this faster? Yeah. There was. Right. Two trips, I think. After that, 112. Uh, which you take 10% error, so it's actually some 103 or something. Yeah, yeah. So you're just over the yeah. speed limit. And you do that for hours. Correct. And then you realize 130 arrives 10 minutes later, uh, 10 minutes earlier. Uh, and 100 arrives with, I don't know, a full tank extra of gas, uh, a lot less aggravation, a lot less energy burn. After that, whatever they posted the speed limit, it's fine. The fastest way to get to your destination, even in an emergency, 
is to drive better but not to necessarily go wildly over the speed limit it's right useless okay so we're getting seriously flagged down because we seem to have crossed a um, number so yeah any mm. closing um, thoughts Uh, if you really love speed that much, get to a race track. Absolutely. It's designed to do it. We did a podcast on this. We we'll leave a link uh, where we did discuss the logistics and the charm and the challenge of coming to a race track in total detail. So I'm not going to go into that today. But he said, celebrate speed. Celebrate speed needs a location. Locations like that exist. Thirty km pace and the dirt can frighten the <laughs> heck out of you with speed. and 160 on the race on a race track given enough time can feel slow too so speed has its own thing but you can't do it when there are other people around you can't do it it's not possible to do it so if you're speeding on the street for any reason at all just stop it it's it's a waste of time all right we didn't go too dark amazing i think on that note it's no when i said waste of time you know what i actually meant right uh okay you go <laughs> disconnect